Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Oat Milk Dutch Baby with Strawberry and Rhubarb. That's right, we've done Dutch Babies before, but never like this. All right, what you're about to see is what ended up being three very successful experiments involving using oat milk instead of regular milk, baking these in a pie pan for an individual sized portion, and would this work using our famous cold oven start method? And I have to say the cows and I were thrilled with how this came out. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with our strawberry rhubarb topping, which begins with this bowl of quartered strawberries, which I cut up first and then rinsed, so there would be a little bit of moisture still on the berry, which is gonna give us a little head start on forming the strawberry syrup that you're gonna see later. And then to this, we will add a little bit of freshly grated lemon zest, right? Not too much, maybe like half a teaspoon. And then we'll also toss in a generous tablespoon of white sugar, plus about a tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice, which is give or take about half a small lemon. And that's it, we'll simply take a spoon and give this a mix until we feel like most of that sugar's been dissolved, at which point we'll cover this and toss it in the fridge for about an hour to two hours, where it will, as we call it in the business, macerate. No, I said macerate, which means bringing out the flavor of the fruit by letting it sit in sugar. And for best results while it's in the fridge, Go ahead and give it a stir or two, which will help ensure a nice even maceration. But anyway, we will pop that in the fridge and we will move on to our rhubarb, or as people who don't know what this is call it, red celery. And to prep this, we'll go ahead and cut off both ends, especially the end with any green stuff, since yes, it's true, rhubarb is toxic. If you eat enough of the leaves, which I'm recommending you don't do, but what we should do is cut this in half, and then each half and half lengthwise, at which point, as usual, we'll simply turn it and slice it across into about quarter inch pieces. Although anything close is fine, the important part is that they're uniform. So pick a size and stick with it. And then what we'll do once that's cut is take our trusty bench scraper and we'll transfer that into a small pan and we will head to the stove where we will add a nice splash of cold fresh water plus a couple tablespoons of white sugar and we will turn our heat on to medium and we'll wait for our mixture to start simmering. And while we do, we'll go ahead and give that a mix with our freakishly small wooden spoon. Oh yeah, it's been a while. And then what we'll do once this mixture starts bubbling is reduce our heat down a little bit, like to medium low, or whatever setting will maintain a nice steady simmer like this. And we will cook this stirring occasionally for about five minutes or so, or until our rhubarb just gets soft. And we know it's done if we can smush it with our spoon. And once our rhubarb is cooked, if we still have a good amount of liquid in the pan, which I do, I like to turn the heat up to medium high for like just a minute, just so that stuff reduces a little bit and things get a little more syrupy. So that's exactly what I did. And after letting it reduce for about 45 to 60 seconds, I went ahead and turned off the heat. And basically that is it. We will simply let this cool down to room temp before we add it to our strawberries. And then once that has cooled down, we can go ahead and grab our strawberries which for me have been macerating for about an hour. And we'll go ahead and give those a stir. And as you can see, those berries have darkened up and that sugar has drawn out all kinds of goodness. And what's formed is a very light, but incredibly flavored strawberry syrup. But hang tight, it gets better. Because what we'll do is go ahead and add our cooled rhubarb and we will stir that in. And what's gonna happen is all those little pieces are basically gonna disappear into our strawberry syrup. And instead of having these beautiful berries just coated with regular strawberry syrup, we now have them coated in a strawberry syrup infused with rhubarb flavor. And if by some miracle you've never tasted rhubarb and strawberry together, it is one of the great combinations in culinary history and not to be missed. And that's it, our topping's done, and we can just set that aside or pop it back in the fridge while we move on to prep our pie dish, which is just your standard nine inch size. And to prep this, we will add a couple tablespoons of melted butter, which we will brush all over, the bottom and the sides. And as we do this, our butter's gonna cool, which means it's gonna thicken up slightly. And the reason I'm telling you that is once it does, we will finish by brushing upward all the way around. Okay, we wanna try to go straight up. And believe it or not, that groovy butter is gonna help our Dutch baby rise up nice and straight and as high as possible. And that's it, once our pie dish has had a proper buttering, we can move on to make our very simple Dutch baby batter, which we'll start with just two large eggs, since we're just trying to do an individual portion. 
And then to that, we will add a little touch of real pure vanilla extract, plus definitely a nice big pinch of salt. And then we'll finish up with a little bit of all-purpose flour. And then finally, one of the main experiments here, some oat milk. And that's it. We'll go ahead and take a whisk and give this a mix for about a minute or until it's nice and smooth. And yes, I do add everything at once and not take five minutes sprinkling in the flour gradually, like my arch nemesis, Chef Marco Pierre White. And sure, we're going to get a couple tiny lumps, but they do not matter, and it's going to come out exactly the same. So it's your choice, the five-minute method or the 45-second method. And once we do have that mixed up nice and smooth, we'll go ahead and transfer it into our dish, at which point we will very, very carefully transfer that into the center of a cold oven. Oh yeah, you heard me. I said place this into a cold oven, at which point we'll turn our oven on, and we will set our heat to 500 degrees, and we will leave that to cook for 25 minutes, or until it looks like this. So yes, our cold oven start definitely worked. The only difference though between that and the smoking hot cast iron pan start is that the center doesn't also puff up and brown a little bit, which since we're gonna to top this really didn't matter, but I did wanna point out it's not gonna be exactly the same. Oh, and if you're taking pictures, do that quickly, because these do deflate as they cool, and speaking of cooling, let me go ahead and grab a spatula and a plate, since we want to serve this right away. But not before we fill the center with our beautiful strawberry rhubarb topping. And of course, feel free to spoon yours in like someone that doesn't have to take contractually obligated pictures. So yeah, that took me about five minutes to do. And I should mention, you don't have to stir the rhubarb into the strawberries. You can just add the strawberries first and then spoon that over the top. But personally, I like it when the rhubarb becomes part of the serve. And then I'm going to finish this up with a few optional garnishes, the first of which would be a dusting of powdered sugar, which you don't have to use, but I do think it makes for a more dramatic presentation. Plus, classically, a Dutch baby is garnished with powdered sugar and lemon juice. But anyway, you decide. I mean, you are, after all, the baby mama of creating drama. And that's it. I finished up with a gratuitous, but I think pretty sprigament. And my oat milk Dutch baby with strawberries and rhubarb was ready to enjoy. So I grabbed a fork and dug in to experience that incredible combo of that brown crusty edge along with that custardy center with our perfectly balanced strawberry and rhubarb topping. All right, that, my friends, is a breakfast or brunch item fit for a queen or a king or whatever you're into. And because there's no sugar in the Dutch baby batter, we really do need the sweetness from that fruit which by the way, I put the minimum amount of sugar in, right? That was only three tablespoons total. And that bowl I made was enough for two of these. So if you wanted this a little sweeter, you could easily double that amount. But personally, I thought it was fine, especially with that little extra powdered sugar we did on top. And no, you cannot tell we used oat milk here and not regular milk. So yes, in case you've been wondering, it is possible to make a beautiful Dutch baby without having to tug on the underside of a cow. And what I really love about this is that it's fancy enough for a special occasion brunch, but also perfect for some weeknight when you've just had one of those days that can only be saved by having breakfast for dinner. And of course, this would also be perfect on Mother's Day when you want to treat mom to breakfast in bed. Although, please, please check with her to make sure that's something she's into. Okay, it's been my experience that most people don't want breakfast in bed. Right, people actually enjoying breakfast in bed is one of those things that only happens in movies and TV shows. You know, like supermodels dating guys that are bald. But no matter what the occasion, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.